Welcome back. This is game two of Ghosty Terran against KT.MGW Grape, the Eastro B Teamer Protoss. It is uh, kind of sort of an Eastro tryout. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of uh, young, talented players and some of the older talented as well, of course, playing against Eastro members uh, a little bit more often now than I have been recently. If you recall, before Rhett came to Korea, I had him play games against Eastro, you know, kind of skill testing type of things. You know, fun matches also for the community to watch. You know, you get to actually watch real test style games. You know, this is kind of like, hey, Easter, you should be interested in this guy. You know, let's get him some matches. So we see this is Grape. This is a shared account amongst pro gamers on IC Cup. So if you played this, it wasn't necessarily Grape. It could have been just about anybody. Uh, we have the Easter manager, Juani, there. I'm sure you've seen him in videos and heard him mentioned quite a bit. And we have Ghosty Terran, the... Uh, <laughs> the angry little Mexican Terran. Uh, really great player. Round of 16 in the TSL right now. And first game we saw on Moonblade, uh, Courage Map. He pretty much tore apart Grape, you know. It was uh, quite a good game, really good Vulture Harass. Uh, defended the Reaver not that well, but well enough. And, uh, you know, just kind of did a 5 factory timing into Contain, you know, held off for a bit, kept his expansions up, kept his macro going, and ended up winning. So, uh, really nice play. Grape you know, seem to be quite far behind from uh, reasonably early, you know, into the game. By the time Ghost Terrence was taking his third base, he was like, all right, <laughs> I mean, come on, you're, you're in trouble, buddy. But anyways, the laundry toss, he has gotten better recently. I'm sure he is not happy losing to a foreigner there. I'm, I think we're going to see a much better game out of him this time. And the map is Fighting Spirit. So we have, uh, he's over here at the top right. He has gone for the 12 Nexus build, very strong on this map. Ghosty Terran at the top left, and we saw him on this map against Infernal go for the, the Barracks into Command Center build, which is, uh, you know, a very fast expansion build, very good against 12 Nexus, of course, but we do not see him doing it this time, despite his apparent skill with the build. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly his reasoning behind it. There are some, some holes in that build, you know, something like a one base Reaver, really quick Reaver into two gate goon with Reaver very good against it, but this is a 12 Nexus map, so you don't see that too often. So he scouts out really, really quickly that it is a 12 Nexus build, takes some SCVs off the gas, makes the factory. Now what are we going to see here? He is producing uh, additional Marines here. I'm interested to see, is he going to pressure right away with a Vulture, you know, just make an expansion? What exactly is he going to do? Uh, and I can get some hints from that. He has only one SCV on gas, so we're not going to see some sort of all-in two factory. If you're going to go two factory against a 12 Nexus, you really need a lot of tanks and you need a lot of gas for it, so you do not take SCVs off gas. And he is scouting that there are two gates and the cyber core going up, so probably we just see a Zealot pop out, and then just Dragoon production pretty steadily. So uh, that's pretty good at holding everything. Now, what are the other builds he could be doing here? He's already made a few Marines. Oh, he is actually going to send uh, SCVs and Marines. And we do not see a Zealot quite yet. So unless it pops out pretty soon here, he may actually be skipping that. Uh, but let's see. He's going to throw up a bunker pretty quick. He should throw it up right here because it's going to make it hard for probes to get around. Instead, he throws it in the middle where it can be surrounded. Uh, you know, that's just a, a very slight mistake. But here we go. This is going to be very micro-intensive. He tries to probe drill right through. There is a Zealot here. But it's, if he can micro really pro gamer level, then that Zealot's not going to be able to do that much. If he gets his bunker up, that's pretty awesome. He hasn't sent too, too many SCVs. He's lost one already in a nice micro right there. Keeps that Zealot away from his Marines. Really, really nice. But the probes, they have range. <laughs> and he takes out the Zealot. Very nice. Load that in the bunker, and you're in good shape, my friend. There we go. The probes are now in trouble. They're going to have to retreat. And Dragoons without range against a bunker being repaired by SCVs. Don't think so. Uh, the Vulture now going to be able to peel shields off there pretty quickly. And he's in pretty good shape. He can just rally up. And he should be able to take down this Nexus realistically. I, I think that the range is going to be just too slow. Yeah, if he had saved one more Marine, I would say 100% this Nexus is going down. As is, he's not dealing damage quite as quickly, but he definitely has enough SCVs here to keep the bunker alive a pretty long time, even with range finishing up. 
so I think it's not going to be a problem. Now let's see what he's doing at home. He has the add-on, uh, still producing marines. It looks like he's probably making tank. Yep, he is. And the dragoons. Oh, I wish I had seen that. I cannot believe I missed that. But it looks like they try to run around there. His SCVs blocked reasonably well. And this Nexus, it is just losing skill. This Dragoon, probably going to try to hold off uh, any units, but here comes a Siege Tank. Now, the Siege Tank is going to really help against Dragoons trying to hurt that bunker. If you have four Marines in the bunker, a bunch of SCVs, and a tank might grip perfectly behind it, that's going to do really well against just a bunch of ranged goons trying to bust out of the natural. So, you know, I, this is this is really nice to see you. Ghosty Terran is playing very, very well. And uh, <laughs> this is a, this is a really a must-see match. I, I'm very happy right now uh, to have you know, Horns getting better and better. Look at this. What is? Ah, oh, he's running up. It looked like he wanted to snipe at the tank, possibly. The tank was not in a good range for that. And look at this. He is taking a ton of damage now, trying to kill this tank, and he loses a few dragoons because of it. He is going to lose this nexus. So uh, right now, you know, Ghosty Terran, he has started his command center. He only has one factory. Still a decent number of SCVs. A uh, decent number of probes over here, but more SCVs it looks like. And it, this is beauty. This is pure beauty right here. You have this bunker holding the dragons back, gives you time to lay your spider mines, and now the Protoss has a light contained on him. He's going to have to tech to observers or sacrifice units to get to you. Uh, the feeling for a Terran player at this point is unimaginably good. And I got to tell you, I actually have shivers and chills. I have goosebumps on my arms. This is great. You know, we've had a lot of matches against B-teamers. I've been saying for a long time, I really feel like foreigners are getting to that level where they are, you know, the top foreigners are B-teamer level. And I think now what we're seeing with the TSL really spurring on players to practice more and more and more, and a lot more people realizing that Korea is now a more accessible thing than it ever has been. You know, we got Noni over here, we got Red over here recently. Uh, and I'm working on more and more of that. I think that we're going to see, you know, just more and more skill jumps, especially StarCraft 2 coming out. People just want to be good at these games, want to be pro gamers. So, you know, Ghosty Terran is showing that he's not even a low-level B-teamer, perhaps. At least in this matchup, at least in this match. He's performing at really quite a high level. So, uh, JF, White Raw, TT1, beware. <laughs> well... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if he can make it that far. Those are great players as well. But we see the Observer is done. He is pushing out now. And Ghost of going to want Siege Mode. He's already researching it. You know, he's got enough Marines that he can easily make a bunker. Maybe do some Spider Mines to slow the Dragons down. See, just tanks in some good positions. Maybe one back here. One up here. Uh, or maybe even make a wall in. I mean, he has all sorts of options. But if he dies to this, then he's done. Uh, it looks like he's not going to left two of the dragons at home, so this is just kind of a mind clearing tactic. And look at that, throwing down that, that barracks. This is a little hole of death. Nothing's going to try to charge him and kill his tanks. So we see he is up to three. Ooh, this is really interesting. This is kind of a freestyle play. Uh, you know, this whenever you kill uh, early Protoss expansion with a bunker, there's all sorts of different situations that can cause. Um, and you really got to kind of freestyle after him. See, he is freestyling. Double add on the only three factories. So he's going to go tank heavy, but it looks like he is going to try to put on some more pressure. Or he's thinking that he is not really ahead. If you're ahead, you can put on a little bit of pressure. If you're not, you can just use these three factories as a defensive mechanism. Be like, all right, all I have to do right now is just live, and I should be fine. We'll go into a slightly longer game. So I'm not sure exactly which one he's planning right now, but 